Hello, and welcome to this video on genetic diversity. First, it is necessary to understand that genes are distributed across a given population in a pattern that roughly matches the standard curve. This means that a random sample of people in your town, city, or state will yield a result with the genes you are investigating being most low presence in a quarter, moderate in half, and most high in the last quarter. A highly diverse genome will have a wider spread, with more low and high presence, and lower moderate gene presence still. As discussed in previous videos, this can be a problem when a bottleneck or found of effect occurs. This led to the fuzzy balls of adorables known as the koala having chlamydia, but more on that later. Nothing quite exemplifies the idea of genetic diversity as the royal families of Europe. Genetic diversity is important for a number of reasons. One, the widest selection reduces deleterious mutations more frequently. Two, the high diversity creates opportunity for adaptation to novel threats and environmental conditions. Three, the wider gene selection leads to a more diverse immunological profile of the population. And four, more or less relevant to this video are other factors that it benefits this species, such as allowing them to access different food sources. Genetic diversity is one thing clearly missing from the royal bloodlines of Europe. The families have historically all carried the gene for haemophilia, and in the case of the heterozygous females and monozygous males, they were victims. As monozygous females are asymptomatic, it led to their offspring becoming carriers or victims again. This comes from the limited pool of breeding couples and royal families. As each family selected the most advantageous partner they could, the available heirs diminished. This meant that the female princesses would marry into households that were likely already cousins or close relatives of their own. This meant that the royal heir and the princess would marry their close relations. As an example of this practice, Queen Victoria married her second cousin, two steps away on the family tree. Her children married into the Spanish and Swedish crown. This created a very close common ancestor. Belgium and Luxembourg had the same problem with Christian IX of Denmark. Over time, the traits not only spread from the patients with the diseases like hemophilia, but also became entrenched. The genes were reinforced, and there was no new material entered. As a consequence, the genome went from a relatively wide and equal spread to a narrow and uniform pattern in a few hundred years. Limiting the scope of this even further, the royal families of Britain were even more inbred prior to the ascension of Queen Elizabeth II. Royal and peerage married royals and peerage. This had the effect of creating a small pool of genes as described in the previous videos on genetic drift. The royal families essentially created a founding population, much like the Amish and Hasidic Jewish populations. From the first three points made about the benefits of genetic diversity, it can be implied that the inbreeding of royal families led to a limited gene selection. This means that deleterious mutations were not removed. Without the new genes introduced in crossover during meiosis and fertilization, the genes may be swapped, but swapped for the same or a worse gene. In turn, the pool of eligible partners is reduced, as marrying into a diseased family may present problems from stigma, or it may be considerable trade due to prestige. The next thing it had to do with was adaptation. The inbreeding of royal families had generated problems with fertility and congenital defects. It also led to a high incidence of other diseases. An inherited defect occurred in James VI of Scotland's line, where his father, himself, and his children had neuromuscular problems. Another example is the higher rate of colour blindness, which has an obvious impact on the fitness of the royal family in terms of natural selection. This, with a reduced reproductive rate, means the families would inevitably die out. As they are unable to adapt to the changing times and conditions, and quite often lacked an heir, this could also explain some of the high turnover in royal families, particularly of Britain and the rest of the European continent. The final point regards immunity. As an example, Crohn's disease is postulated as the cause of death for Prince Albert. This is an autoimmune disease which slowly destroys the GI tract through inflammation and damage. The more closely related parents are, the more likely they are to produce an offspring with a self-positive immune response, otherwise known as an autoimmune disease. Overall, the probability of potentially life-threatening illnesses and diseases is twice that of the normal population when parents are first cousins. Now that the royal families have begun to marry the common people, this is being slowly reduced, 
but is likely a leap playing the game of genetic probability. This is a predictable asset, given the inbreeding coefficient developed by Alvarez and company in 2009. On a wider scale, and more specific, the problem of inherited diseases and defects can be seen in the prion diseases of cannibal tribes, where not only is continuing to engage in their practice causing the problem to continue and get worse, but they have also inherited it in all probability from their parents. Now to explain why koalas have chlamydia. And no, they are not turning tricks to pay their way through college. The low genetic diversity of koalas is caused by the population issues described in the previous video. This has led to a deficiency in the immune response of a large number of koalas that are unable to contain the disease. As a result, they experience the effect of it in a more pronounced way, in some cases leading to sterility. This further compounds the issue of genetic diversity as it has with the royal bloodlines. Fewer offspring reduces genetic diversity. This reduces immune response, making the problem worse. The cycle repeats. As the breeding season arrives, so too does the season of STIs, as in this case, the chlamydia is not necessarily an STI, but can be transmitted that way. As a result of this, up to 90% of individual koala populations can be infected in a meaningful way, and this has created an epidemic. As a result of that, up to 50% of the total population is infected with chlamydia. The issue is not limited to only human reproduction. An example of genetic diversity problems include the Irish potato blight and consequential famine, and the previously described issues with culture and yeast. Another example that might touch closer to home are dog breeds, and these are increasingly seen as an example of genetic diversity that has failed when inbreeding leads to genetic defects such as spinal malformations, hock issues, or short lifespans. Thank you for watching this video. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.